The Green Line Extension. Good morning. It is close to 2.30 at night and we're at a hotel in Cambridge, I think. Well, it's next to Leechmere to have easier access to the first train that's going to run out of Tufts, Medford. No, Medford Tufts. God. Slash Tufts. <laughs> Medford slash Tufts. Yes, that, that's correct. Uh, Edford slash Tufts. Edford. Shut up. <laughs> we got this hotel for the purpose of seeing the green line from the outside. Um, as you can see here by the window, the the green line is right behind the sound wall. Which doesn't even do anything about the sound. No, you can still hear the green line. Medford slash Tufts. All the green. Grand opening. Whoa. It's 4.15 now. Got our dunks here with Kev back there. Can you not? God, Antanas, and even further is Jared. Try to get on this train as soon as possible because it's freezing. It's, it is, I don't know, 30 degrees outside or something. You shut up! No. Let me live my life. No. Let me complain. No. Okay. B-roll. <laughs> B-roll. Where's Kev? Kev, you gotta say B-roll. You gotta say B-roll. B-roll. No. no, no, you gotta say B-roll. Get in B-roll. Get in the face. B-roll. Okay. We got it. Why you hanging on the roof all by yourself? I have an open invitation, but you tell me go get lost. I don't wanna see your face. Yeah, what the hell? So I don't. Right, so today is December 24th, Christmas Eve. It's been almost two weeks since the Medford branch has opened, so I thought it'd be time to give you some facts and history about GLX in general. So let's start with Leechmere. Nothing too dramatic. Well, <laughs> and I say nothing too dramatic, I mean the station is completely different. The old Leechmere, which was the termination station, no longer exists, and now Leechmere exists as a normal connection station or station in general. And it takes Leechmere as an elevated stop to continue along up north to Medford and to Union Square. But yeah, there's nothing really else to talk about here in Leechmere. Of course, I have a video about Leechmere and the viaduct, so you can check that out if you'd like. But let's head on over to East Somerville. Right, so now I'm at East Somerville, and this is where the Green Line adjoins with the Lowell Line right behind me. The Lowell Line plays an important part into the Medford branch because not only does the Lowell Line provide the needed space or the right-of-way for the trolley service, 
but it was also the inspiration of the Green Line extension and the station stops along it. In 1830, the Boston and Lowell Railroad was established in linking the two namesake cities with construction of the railroad completed in 1835. For this video, we are only going to focus on the railroad running through Cambridge, Medford, and Charlestown. The Charlestown portion, which contained the railroad, would later become Somerville. In 1838, the West Medford Station was incorporated along the route, and over the course of several years, seven other stops were added in between West Medford and the Lowell Depot, the terminus in Boston. In the 1920s, after the Boston and Lowell was acquired by the B&M, Boston and Maine, the railroad ended service to East Cambridge and Prospect Hill as the rail line was realigned to facilitate trains into the newly built North Station. From the mid-1930s to the late 70s, other stations were eliminated as the B&M and the entire rail industry was in jeopardy. Although the Lowell Line was bought by the MBTA in 1973, there was a 5.5 mile or 9 kilometer gap in rail service from North Station to West Medford. Even before the B&M discontinued passenger rail service in this corridor, studies were conducted to implement rapid transit along the Lowell Line as a means to provide more frequent service than the railroad had offered. A report published in 1926 by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Division of Metropolitan Planning suggested a route coming out from Lechmere and running parallel to the Lowell Line until somewhere past Winchester. In 1945, Governor Arthur Coolidge formed the Coolidge Commission to continue the effort the 1926 study had proposed. The Commission's plan illustrated the same concept as the previous study, but this time indicating an extension all the way to Woburn. The actual planning for an extension beyond Lechmere was only brought to light in the 1980s when the infamous highway project was in the works, the Big Dig. The governing body at the time used the Big Dig as leverage to fund multiple public transit projects as a means to mitigate the highway's impact. In 1992, as part of several mitigation projects, the extension beyond Lechmere was conceived as the Green Line extension. Utilizing part of the Coolidge Commission plans, the Green Line was planned to extend to Medford with an additional branch to Union Square in Somerville. Although there were setbacks, the Green Line extension began revenue service in two stages. First was the opening of the Union Square branch on March 21st, 2022. This also began the operations of the newly refurbished Lechmere Viaduct and the opening of the new Lechmere Station. The second stage was the opening of the Medford branch on December 12th of that same year. The Medford branch's stations are more or less in the same spots as the former BNL stations. The Union Square station from the Union Square branch is also situated on a formal railroad station along the present-day Fitchburg line. Right, so now, giving up all that information, we got a train to catch over to Gilman Square. <laughs> now at Gilman Square, and something you may notice if you ever come to any of these stations or notice in the video, they're all pretty much designed in the same manner. You just have this canopy at the top, normal platform, uh, station signs, so on and so forth. Now, originally, when they were designing and planning for the project, there were a lot more amenities. There were uh, waiting areas, fare gates, even escalators, not just the staircases or the elevators. Well, unfortunately, when they were originally coming up with the cost estimates, it was $2 billion. But afterwards, they found that it was going to cost an extra billion or, you know, roughly around the same number. And the project was almost completely scrapped because of that uh, increase in price. So a lot of cost cutting was done, including uh, toning down the station design. The stations were kind of like a sacrifice in order to make the project possible and real. With that, we're going to move on to Magoon Square. Right, made it off in Magoon Square, but before I talk about anything else, we have to go up to the footbridge. Not a footbridge, this is the bridge. Yes. Why do I call it a footbridge? It's a bridge. <laughs> we gotta go up to the bridge. So right now I'm not at Magoon Square, but I am in fact at the Somerville Community Path. So part of the Green Line extension was to take the existing Somerville Community Path and connect it from Magoon Square all the way down to Leechmere. The Somerville Community Path is also part of a much larger network of trails in Massachusetts. The path is particularly a section of the Mass Central Rail Trail, a trail which seeks to connect Boston to Northampton with a distance totaling 104 miles or roughly 167 kilometers. If you go this way, you're going to end up in Davis Square. And if you go this way, you'll end up in Leechmere. But anyways, let's make our way back over to 
the Magoon Square Station and make our next stop to Ball Square. I arrived at Ball Square, hopefully I could see that in the shot, uh, to continue talking about what needed to be done to make this project happen. And in order to do that, I want to go up to Broadway real quickly. As you can see here, I'm on the Broadway Bridge right down here. It says 2020. That is the year it was built. So why I'm mentioning about the bridge being rebuilt is that, well, first of all, it wasn't the only bridge that was rebuilt. There were multiple other bridges along the corridor that had to be redone in order to accommodate the space for both the lower line and the green line. Not only were there some bridges that had to be rebuilt, but some buildings were demolished along the way. In addition to the rebuilding of the bridges and some demolition work, the lower line was shifted over to squeeze in the green line. Now with that, we gotta make our way over to the last stop. Thanks. <laughs> so with that, let's head on over to Medford Tufts. So one of the major discussions during the planning was to decide where the Green Line would terminate. And it was determined that the termination point would be at Medford Hillside. The only problem was, where the heck do you find Medford Hillside? So there were ongoing debates about it, but there was a general agreement that it should be by Route 16 or the Mystic River. But there were a couple of problems as to actually making that happen. One of them being cost, but the other was that the local communities were a bit worried about the effects of gentrification the Green Line might have had. So the Route 16 idea was scrapped and instead, terminating point was decided to be at Tufts University. But as of now, there are ongoing studies to have the Green Line extend all the way out to Route 16. So if I just quickly run back over to the Medford Tufts station. I really need to run because it's so cold out here. Right, so the Medford Tufts station is right over there. And running along here is right now the storage tracks for the trolleys. But the way they laid it out is so that in the future, if they do want to extend the Green Line to Route 16, it's not going to be any problem. So that has been the Medford branch, but now let's head on over to Union Square. So funny thing, I am on 3636, which is in fact the first trolley that rolled out of Medford Tufts as a revenue train. So nice to be on the inaugural train. <laughs> right so i made it to union square where i'm going to wrap up this video now i did make a video on the opening of the union square branch but i never got into why it was created in the first place i mean after all in the early 20th century they never had union square as a proposed station to put it simple somerville was developing the area and so they figured might as well have a transit stop stopping at the square so ultimately union square was added to the plans for glx now much like the route 16 study is going on supposedly there is a study to actually extend the union square branch into porter hopefully you know we'll see some more plans of that happening sometime soon but i'm gonna wrap this up because it is super cold i think it's like 10 degrees <laughs> this thing's really acting up thank you so much for watching and next stop <laughs>